<clears throat> hey Matthew, how's it going? <clears throat> All right, y'all. It's about two minutes till nine, so we're just gonna kind of get everything situated, make sure it's going, it's working. I got four screens, uh, making sure everything's working before I get started here. So, if you got your coffee, grab your coffee. Glad you're doing well, my, uh, Matthew. Hopefully uh, the, the family's doing well too. I'm sure you guys are staying safe at home. So for those of you that uh, are joining me for the first time, um, I do have four streams going on, uh, two Instagram accounts, and then actually five, um, and two of the Facebook Live options. So therefore, I'm going to be looking for comments on, on all four, so bear with me um, as we go through today's topic, uh, progressive lenses. I'm just going to wait until 9 o'clock before we start here, so make sure I have everything set up correctly. So far, all the streams are working. What is up, Lance? What's up, Vit? All right, I think I got everything going. Everybody can hear me okay? <laughs> I'm definitely not DJing today. Uh, it's more of an educational thing today, Oliver. All right, nine o'clock. Eye to eye sessions with uh, Dr. Tuan Tran. Today's topic is progressive lenses. So just to give you a little bit of background on myself, um, I've been in the I've been practicing for uh, over ten years as an optometrist. I have two private practices, um, both in North Texas, uh, one at the University of North Texas, and uh, one in Little Elm, which is about 20, 25 miles east east of Denton. And um, my staff, my group of uh, associate doctors, and myself, we and our staff, we rotate between the two offices. Um, and right now we're both, both offices are closed uh, due to the COVID-19 virus. So I am just going to engage and educate and just try to interact with, you know, my friends, my family, um, my patients, uh, colleagues, everyone to the best that I can. Uh, good morning, Kevin, pork chop. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hopefully you guys have your coffee with you. I'm just sipping on some coffee and we're going to go through something called progressive lenses today. So stay tuned and uh, I'll let you know what I recommend, all right? All right, so I've been, I've been creating a lot of, uh, I've been learning a lot of software and technology since uh, I've been home. Obviously there's a lot of small business stuff to do, but um, it's a good time to learn about a lot of cool stuff. So I've been uh, putting my uh, my hands and mind into some cool stuff. Anyways, um, just to start again, you know, to my professional colleagues in the medical field, the people in the front line, the nurses, the doctors, I definitely want to say thank you to all of them for doing what they're doing, risking their lives, and obviously, you know, even staying away from their, their family to do what they do every day, uh, saving people's lives and just... Uh, uh, being part of that front line so uh, don't forget to give thanks to those people uh, because they are important to what's going on right now all right um, just a reminder for COVID-19 for those of you who don't know um, wash your hands with soap and water for about 20 seconds at a time if you have a kid at home you know have them wash their hands too don't just use uh, the wipes and stuff because that can only do so much have them say their ABCs, uh, you know, so to, to for enjoyment there. Avoid touching your face. This is something that's really hard to do. Um, touching your face is something that we all like to do. I have my glasses on, and I will say that a lot of people like to touch their glasses a lot compared to contacts. So that's something I said on my last episode. Um, stay home. Avoid going out. Get delivery if you can. You know, if you're outside walking, exercising, you know, separate yourself from your neighbors and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's important. 
avoid close contact. It's not rude to just say hi, to wave and whatnot. Um, you have tissues, throw it away, clean and disinfect frequently. All right, just those are just reminders. Um, again, today's subject is progressive lenses. Some of you guys may be familiar with this. Some of you guys have no idea um, you know, what progressive lenses are. I'm 40 years old and this is a big topic because a lot of my friends that are around my age, my colleagues that are around my age, are probably getting into the progressive lenses part. And um, I'm, I've been in progressive lens for three years. And to wrap this session up, I'm gonna talk about what I recommend and why, so stay tuned to that. Now, throughout the sessions, like I said before, I'm gonna be checking messages, right? So I have two Instagram accounts going right now, I have um, three Facebook Lives going, so I'm gonna check in here and there. So feel free to ask, all right? Um, I, I have a presentation, but feel free to ask as well. I'm just gonna check a couple messages here on this side. Perfect, everything is good, all right. Let's keep going. All right, Mythbusters. So I have a good amount of Mythbusters uh, for a lot of you guys that, that have questions about um, progressive lenses. So let's get into the Mythbusters. They are for old people. That's probably the first thing you think about. Um, a lot of people think bifocals are progressives. Bifocals are, they have the line in them. Progressives do not. And they are not for old people, all right? Now, if you're turning 40, I like to say you're hitting your prime, all right? You've lived 40 years of your life. You got another 40 years of living. Why are you considered old? Now, when you need progressives, your eyes are just getting tired. You're not getting old. It just needs a little help, okay? Now, this also means that a lot of people that come into my office when they're around this age, they tend to be in denial. I don't have a problem telling you, hey, you need to go into progressives. You need to go into reading glasses. You know, your eyes need a little bit of help. It doesn't mean that you're old. Your eyes are just changing, all right? So it's important that everybody understands that um, progressives are not for old people. Your eyes are used every single point of the waking moment of the day. So you need to really focus on, you know, helping your eyes see better. It affects how you know you feel at the end of the day. It affects how productive you are at work. I'm sure 80, 90% of you guys are in front of a computer or screen, some sort, every day, right? So just think about this. Your eyes are being used all the time. And in the last 15, 20 years, we're, we're changing the way we're using our eyes much more than we have before. Meaning not only we're eight to 10 hours in front of a, a laptop or a monitor, or two monitors or three monitors, at UNT, the standard is two monitors. A lot of my patients have three or four, right? Um, and then at home, you have your phone with you in your pocket all the time. You prefer to have your phone over your, your wallet. I bet you that right now. So it's important that you understand that this is not, you know, progressive lenses doesn't mean it's for old people. It's for anybody at any age. I pro pro uh, prescribe progressives for 18-year-olds, freshmen in college. Why? Because their eyes need help focusing up close. They need a the little bit of magnification to see a little bit better. So it's not for old people. Don't think that, please. Um, it, it's, it's there to help you see better and use technology. All right. Um, let me check questions real quick here. Uh, so I have a good question here. I, um, the question is, what what is the difference between bifocals and progressives? Just in a summary, it the bifocal has two focal lengths. I'm going to go over this a little bit later, but bifocals have two focal lengths, meaning it has two areas of vision, two prescriptions. One, the top part is for the distance. When you look through the semi-moon area on the bottom, it's a magnification for reading. We don't use that anymore because you have a computer screen that is at a, a different distance now. It's not for up close by your hands. It's further away at the fingertips of your hands. Progressives are able to take care of all three. All right. Um, so in a quick nutshell, that's what that is. All right. Uh, next myth buster. Progressives, they're bigger and thicker than ordinary glasses or lenses. Not necessarily. Um, that's a general myth um, because you're, you're, you have two prescription, you're, 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 you're fusing them together. So a lot of people tend to, to believe that they tend to be thicker. Not necessarily. In today's technology, we, we're doing a lot better with uh, with reducing the lens size and, and digitizing the lenses to where they're actually uh, are the same or very similar. Now, 
if you are nearsighted like myself, your, your lenses tend to be a little bit thicker on the edges, okay? And a lot of you guys that are nearsighted may understand this. You try to hide that thickness on the edge of the, your lenses, right? I'm gonna kind of show you here. I'm in a progressive lens, by the way. My lenses used to be way thicker, all right? Now keep in mind, frames that are larger, when you're nearsighted, as they get bigger, the thickness gets thicker down here. When you're in a progressive, what happens is you have a magnification power, which is a plus power, and it, it balances out the minus power so your lenses actually get thinner so for all your nearsighted people your, your lenses actually start getting thinner a little bit all right um but this is a myth they're not necessarily bigger and thicker than ordinary glasses now go see your optician you know make sure they advise you on the right type of frame um that would you know it it if you happen to be in a small percentage of patients that do have acquire you know a little bit of a thicker prescription or thicker lenses then there's ways that we can we can uh, mask it Okay, so don't feel like you know, you're stuck to it a certain way. Um, you just got to go uh, with the best advice from optician. All right, so that's a, that's a myth buster there. Next topic. All right, progressives are uncomfortable. You have to move your head all the time. Wrong. Um, just like technology in our lives, progressives change. They, they, they evolutionize. And I think... You know, people hear other people talk about their progressives, giving them problems. So then this rumor, this myth keeps getting passed on from, from person to person through the years. And the problem here is that um, there's a lot of new technology that people don't talk about. People will talk about problems more than what they do about good things happening in their lives. So that's something you have to keep in mind. All right. Um, so, so they're not uncomfortable and you don't have to move your head all the time. Um, if you are wearing the, 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 the best type of progressive, the newest in technology, and I'll go over this later at the end of the slide here, um, you don't have to move your head as much because the newer technology progressives are, are much, has high, it has more, uh, field of vision for you to look through. All right. So it, it, it's not uncomfortable. I, I wear my progressives most of the day. I prefer contact usually, but, um, you know, I, I've been wearing progressive for three years and it doesn't give me that problem. All right. Uh, next topic here. The later I start, the better. Um, that's actually not a good idea. It's, it's easier to adjust and adapt to this new type of uh, setup in progressive lenses from single vision to progressives at an earlier age versus later. Um, I, I think that's important for you to, to understand that later may be worse because now you have a bigger gap to fill up so it's actually good for you to try to do it earlier when you qualify and if your your optometrist tells you um hey i think it's time for you to go into progressive and instead of just like denying the fact that you need it and and whatnot you know you should probably think about going into it right away so that you can adjust quicker to it all right if you have questions as a reminder uh, feel free to ask questions uh, leave comments and whatnot all right they're too expensive that that's probably the most common question or myth that people have in their minds when they are going uh into progressives um so why they're not too expensive if you need progressive chances are you have two different prescriptions meaning you have a distance prescription and you have probably a computer or reading prescription or three prescriptions all right so to maximize your, your, your quality of vision, chances are you're going to need to have two pairs of glasses. So instead of buying two pairs of glasses, maybe you just buy one. Yeah, the lenses for progressives are going to be a little bit higher cost than your, your single vision because it's a multifocal lens. It's a you know multitasking lens. So yeah, it's going to cost a little bit more. But you don't have to buy two sets of frames. You don't have to put in two sets of anti-reflective coating in it, change the material to a polycarbonate or high index. So overall, they're, they're actually probably going to save you money versus buying two or three pairs of glasses that are prescriptions for driving, for watching TV, or for specifically you know, looking at the computer all day, and then one for reading your, your Nook, your Kindle, and up close, right? Um, what's up, Henry? How you doing, brother? Hi, Julie. How are you? My wife's listening in too. Hi, baby. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna check messages real quick. But um, 
Yeah, so that's that's a big thing. They're they're not too expensive. They are higher cost than what you're used to in terms of a one pair of single vision lens, but they're they're not too expensive. They're they're for your eyes. Remember that, guys. They're for your eyes. You use it every day. This is super important. All right. Oops, wrong button there. Let's go back. All right. So those are the myth bu myth busters, um, the most common ones that I came up with. So you know, if you have questions about that, feel free to 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 message me, text me, call me. Uh, email me whatever I'll try to explain further if I need to all right so let's go into the non myth busters let's get educated all right all right once again good morning to you guys uh, drink some coffee some tea whatever you'd like in the morning um, happy Friday by the way good Friday to everybody I forgot to say that so um, so my first slide here in terms of education what are progressive lenses? They are not bifocals. What I have here inside the picture is an actual bifocal, all right? This bifocal here, the top part is the distance and the, the bottom part is the near, right? The problem here is that you don't have an intermediate level. All of you guys have a laptop. Everyone has a computer, right? Uh, most everyone. Now you're gonna need an intermediate area. So therefore, progressives are not bifocals, all right? Progressives, the way they work is they, they are multifocal. They, they gradually magnify from the top part of the prescription to the bottom part of the lens. So if you look here, the, these dotted lines that you see on this picture here, they're actually just showing you the hourglass, the, the area of, of, of prescription clear vision here. Um, so in the middle of your lens is where your clearest uh, areas of, uh, of vision will be. So the top part of your lens will be your distance. As you as you look through the middle part of your lenses, so if I show you, like, wait, let me zoom this in real quick. So if I show you, like, towards my middle part down here, where I'm actually looking through at my laptop, that's my intermediate zone, all right? And then as I look down towards the bottom of my lenses, that's my near. So that's what this is pointing out. I'm in a progressive right now. There are no lines, as you can tell. You probably didn't know I was in a progressive, all right? Um, so... So therefore, this is how a progressive lens work. So you are looking through a an hourglass. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. So there are areas that have soft blur zones. So, so the, the, the areas that's on the outside of the lens here uh, are the areas that are soft blur. Now with the newer technology in terms of um, the lenses, you have less of a soft blur zone. So that's why. What's going, Bob? What's going on, Bobby? How you doing, brother? All right, so next slide here. Why would I need progressive lenses? So if you're sitting there listening to this and you're like, do I need progressive lenses? Um, the best way to find out is go get your routine eye exam, right? Every year you should do one, regardless if you need glasses or not. But at some point in time, your optometrist or ophthalmologist may say, hey, um, you need magnification. You have an ad power in your prescription. On your prescription, uh, there, there should be you know a lot of numbers, but there should be a column that says ad power. If you have a plus something, plus one or more, you have an ad power, which probably means you need a progressive lens, okay? Um, so, so therefore, if you, you start hearing from your optometrist, your physician there, that, that you, you have two different prescriptions and you need to get into a progressive, this is how you know, right? Um, those of you that already you know, need readers to see a little bit better, to see the small print a little bit clearer, you're starting to do this a lot. You drive, you're doing this, you pull up your phone, you're putting your glasses. I pretend I have readers, right? I'm just going like this, I'm like this, while I'm putting it up my, you know, in my head, you know, I'm hanging it on my my shirt. All right, these are the readers, the people that are re you know, wear readers all the time. This is starting to become very inconvenient. If you're doing this a lot, you need to go in a progressive, right? The, there's no reason for you to do this all day, right? So progressives allow you to multitask, so that's why you need to go into that. Let's say you do have two pairs of glasses because you resisted from going into um, uh, you know, progressives in the first place. Five years ago, you got prescribed progressives. Ah, I don't want progressives. I'm just going to go with you know, two pairs. I'm going to go get one for distance for my driving and then one for my computer screen and phone. All right, fine. I but now what you're doing is you're switching. Pretend I have another frame here. I'm switching back and forth. Okay, two pair all the time. All right, that's inconvenient. You're tired of doing that. You need to go into a progressive lens, all right? 
Um, if you're asking yourself, how do I make multitasking easier with my glasses? You need to go into progressive. You know, I can wear these all day. I can cook. I can clean. I can you know read. I can use my phone. Um, I can play with my son. I can go wash my car. I can drive. Multitasking is easier with the progressive. All right. Got it. Now, I will say something here as I end this slide is that my my professors, my academia people, some of the professionals that are lawyers and accountants, right? Sometimes I will actually recommend that they get a a progressive pair for everyday use when they're away from their desk and then have a second pair prescription computer or reading glasses to use for their daily use. Okay, so there are situations where you do need to pair. You're not going to constantly do this. These are the for the people who just sit in front of the screen and they don't do anything else, but they're hyper focused on what they're doing. Okay, um, they're they're looking at numbers all day. So they're they're designers. They're uh, videographers editing videos, and you're not going to go to a meeting every hour. You're not going to go um, do a presentation every two hours. You're actually just sitting there at the desk, looking at this distance all the time. All right, so. Those are the patients where I say, hey, get a progressive pair and then get a second pair for your desk. When you sit down at your desk, put your, re your, your, pr uh, your prescription computer glasses on or reader, uh, reader glasses on. And then when you get up, switch them to the progressives and go do your multitasking. All right. All right. So for those of you that are already wearing progressives, um, this is, this is going to be important for you because I see this all the time. I see problems with this all the time. All right. I get patients that come into the office, new patients, been wearing progressives for six, seven years, 10 years, whatnot. They come in and I talk about progressives. They're like, oh, I couldn't, you know, my progressives suck. You know, I can't, you know, I, I wish I never got them. So then I start asking them about their problems. What, what kind of issues are you having with progressives? Well, you know, when I'm sitting in front of the desk, in front of the computer, I start, I start doing this a lot, you know, or, you know, my neck starts hurting, my back starts hurting. So I just stop wearing them, right? So the, the reason is there's best practices in terms of how you wear progressives. And, you know, sometimes most of well, my office, my, my staff and I, we, we actually go through this with you in the exam room if you're prescribed progressives for the first time, especially. And then when you when you're um, you're in the op optical and you're you know dispensed your progressive, we try to remind you how to wear them. Right. But sometimes people forget or they weren't paying attention. So. I'm gonna go over that with you right now. Best practices for wearing progressives, all right? Now, I will say this, progressives will, will force you to start having really good posture. I mean, I, I'm a sloucher, I tend to kind of sit and kind of hunch over a little bit. I've noticed that as I wear progressives, I'm learning to, to have really good posture uh, more because I'm reminding myself um, how to sit and wear them, okay? So good posture, what does that mean? When you're wearing progressives, you have to remember, and let me zoom in on my face here, um, the top part of your lenses right up here is your distance, right? For driving, for watching TV, things that are 20 feet, 10, 20 feet beyond, all right? Now, when you're in front of the computer screen, I'm in front of my laptop. I can see over my laptop. So therefore, I'm actually looking down towards the, the middle, mid-range area of my progressive so I can see the print at this distance a little bit clearer. Here's the problem that people bump into. For those of you that have monitors and you're sitting on your desk and what happens is your monitor and let me back out real quick here it's too much in my face your monitor is sitting higher just like this you know so now you're lifting your head because you're trying to look through the more magnified areas of your glasses that's why you're not having you that's why you're having your neck problem that's why you have your back issues because you're actually having your monitors way too high so what you need to do with most monitors now, you can actually lower them and then you can raise your seat up, right? So I'm gonna raise my seat up. So I actually have two monitors in front of me over here too. And my goal is always to look over them when I'm using the monitor so I can maximize my potential in terms of visibility through my progressive lenses, all right? So that's gonna be super important for, for everybody. All right, um, head on a swivel, what does that mean? Well, remember how I showed you that we were looking through an hourglass before? I'm going to kind of go back to that. So this, this picture right here, you're looking through an hourglass. So naturally, if you move your head and on swivel, you know, I know a lot of moms out there have like eyes behind their head so they can kind of just look and they can see the kids. 
Well, you want to avoid doing that with this because you, you want to maximize what you're looking through. All right. So therefore, you want to move your head in the swivel, especially when you're driving. It's like the idea behind, behind driving is that you want to make sure that you turn your head to look where you're going so you maximize your, your, your vision. Same thing with the progressives here. All right. <clears throat> Positioning of targets. I just talked about that. Your targets. Where, where do you, are you going to hold your phone? Uh, I don't have an extra phone here. I'm just using my mouse. Are you going to hold your mouse like way up here? I mean your mouse, your phone way up here to, to, to look at it uh, when you're, you know, typing in a text message or whatnot. I know some of you guys do that because you do this, right? Uh, but anyways, um, you, you're going to hold your phone at a natural position. It's going to be down towards, towards you know, uh, towards your heart area, your chest area at, at a lower space about 16 inches away from your eyes, all right? So, so when you're reading, that's where it needs to be. Uh, your monitors, again. Monitors need to be a little bit lower. You need to be able to look over the top of your monitor when you're wearing progressives. Um, for for the, the, the shorter people out there like myself, get chairs that you can raise up. All right, that's what you need to do. All right. Um, last thing, walk before you run. If you're a new progressive wearer, just just learn, just walk before you run. You know, sit in there, wear them, look around. Every new prescription, whether it's a progressive or a single vision, it's going to take a few days for you to get adjusted to it. That, that's, that's pretty normal, right? Um, but just remember to walk before you run. All right? That's going to be important. Um, up and down stairs, it's a little bit different. That's, someone just asked me about that. Um, up and down stairs is going to be really important here. Um, when, when you're walking up the stairs, as you look down, you're looking through the magnified part. So you're, you're going to see your feet. It's kind of blurry. It's just turn your head down. That's all you gotta do. Again, walk before you run. Don't try to run up the stairs and downstairs when you first got into a progressive fence. All right. All right. Towards the end of the the presentation here, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, for those of you just joining us, my name is Dr. Tuan Tran. You can call me Tuan Tone Super T. I'll respond to all of them. Uh, these are my ITI sessions today. We're talking about progressive lenses. Remember to subscribe, like, comment, ask questions. Um, doesn't have to be now. You can you know, comment after this recording is done. Um, but I'm more than willing to help and educate everybody out there. All right. So we're going towards the end of our progressives here. Progressives are not made the same. No, they are not. All right. And I'm going to go into why they are not made the same. And the main thing for you to understand here is a lot of you guys have vision insurance. Okay. And we get patients coming into our office that you know, asking, hey, I want to get these progressives, you know, and we recommend always the best progressives. Why? I wouldn't want to prescribe my dad or mom uh, an old type of progressive. I'm going to give them the best. So I treat my patients the same way I treat my family. I want you to have the best for your eyes because you're, when you're awake, you're using your eyes, so you need to have the best on your eyes, right? It's a small investment for what you do. So the way to look at progressives, they're on tier levels, okay? They're one, two, three, four classes, if you will. So the higher the tier level, the newer the progressives are, the better the progressives are, all right? Now, I'm using iMed here. iMed is one of the vision plan insurers, right, out there that some of you guys may have. Some of you guys may have v VSP, Severe Revision, Spectera, Davis Vision, you name it, they have it. Chances are when you start looking into your benefits and everyone, I'm going to recommend this, look into your benefits. Don't walk into our office expecting us to tell you what your benefits are and then argue with us what your benefits are covering. You need to know your benefits better than us. Okay? Keep that in mind. All right. So your insurance actually categorizes this for you. So when we are presenting you with what you know your prescription needs, we're actually going by your insurance tier levels. All right? If you're paying out of pocket, who cares? In this situation, tier levels. All right. So this is this is updated. This is progressive tier levels classification of 2020. All right. I pulled this off of the website. Look, this standard progressive. So if you go and buy a standard progressive, this is tier one. You know, you're you're using a, a, a progressive that's that's over 20 years old. So if I told you, hey, Mary. I'm going to offer you a 2000 and year 2000 Honda Accord or year 2020 Honda Accord. They're both brand new. Which one would you want to go with? The prices are going to be different, but which one would you want to go with? Bells and whistles, 
2020. If you're choosing the year 2000, you're on a different plane here. But that's my point here. A standard progressive is 20 plus years ago. These were these were you know in the 1990s, late 1990s, right? There's no reason for anyone to be walking around with a standard progressive lens. If you are, your 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 hourglass that you're looking through is super narrow. It sucks. You don't want to you want to look through that. All right. So you should never. I'm gonna say that never. You should never ever buy a standard progressive in this day and age. If you are, you you're 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 throwing away your money. I'm just telling you that straight up. All right. All right, here's tier one, tier two. Tier one, tier two. Now, these are still old progressives. Believe it or not, they're still designed 15 to 20 years ago. They're not They're not made recently. So I don't even, you know, our offices don't even, even sell these progressives. Why? Because we know they don't work as well. Maybe for the few people out there that don't use as much computer time or, um, or um, phones as much. How many people don't use computer and phone? So small population here. So my offices do not even allow you to buy tier one, tier two. If you want a tier one, tier two, go somewhere else. We're not going to do it because you're going to come back with problems and we don't have time for problems. That's really the, 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 the main thing there. All right. Now your insurance copay, if you get into a tier one, tier two, your copay is going to be less. You know, um, you know, copays are going to be different as you climb the ladder here. All right. Tier three, tier four. Now, this is where you need to get into a progressive. This is where I'm educating you. When you walk into an optical, into a store and say, hey, I have a new prescription. I need to get a progressive. I need I need you to give me options on a tier three or tier four progressive. And if they don't know what you're talking about, you need to walk out that door. All right. This, this is on the insurance plan. I'm just telling you right now. We always recommend tier four. It's going to be highest class. It's an investment, right? It's going to cost more. It's going to be four times more than your standard progressive. But you're paying for quality, all right? Tier 3 can work. Tier 3 is not that old, but they work, you know, um, you know, and, and that's fine. But if you want the latest and greatest, Tier 4 is the way to go. I'm in a Tier 4, you know. Everyone that, that's part of my family, they better be in a Tier 4. <laughs> Anyways, um, so, so this this is very important for you to understand. Tier 1, 2, 3, 4. And a lot of people that I talk to, when they go buy into optical, they don't know this because maybe they're not presented this option, right? Um, they're not told that you have four different tier levels. They're like, oh, well, here's your copay for this for this one. Do you want to get this progressive? Here's your copay. They're, they're, not, they're just trying to make the sale. They're not even trying to educate you on which one you need to go with. Right. So think about that. All right. Keep this in mind. All right. So towards the end, I'm checking my questions here. Make sure I'm covering all the questions. Do, 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 do. Okay. Good question here. I have a really good question. Um, so, so how, how do you know if the opticals, you know, um, there's, so, there's such a big list of the progressives there. How do you know they're not scamming you, right? Whatever. Well, what's interesting is on progressive lenses, there's, uh, let me go back to the slide here. Um, you see all these brand names I see on this slide here? They're usually branded on inside of your, your lenses. So we have this device that allows us to see, it's, an, it's a, what we call a progressive identifier, but it, it allows us to see what brand you're in. So if you don't know if you're in a tier one, two, three, four progressive, bring it, bring it to my office, bring it to our office, or bring it in. I say, hey, can you tell me what progressive type of progressive I'm in? And they can probably tell you the exact name. You know, our office, um, we 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 work with strictly Essilor products. You may have heard of Essilor before, Verilux, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, for me, it's just easier to go with one brand that's one of the leading manufacturers of lenses and just go with that. But there's a lot of different ones out there that you can go with, Zeiss, you know, Hoya, stuff like that. But anyways, yeah, so they're, they're all branded in there. If you don't have a brand in there, you got some, you know, foreign made, I don't know what. But anyways, that's a very good question. That's how you know what tier level you're in. That's what we do. We check when you bring your glasses in and you're a new patient of ours, we're going to check what type of progressive you are so I can educate you better on what you need to be in. Maybe some of the problems that you're having is because you're just in a poorly made progressive. All right. It's not the prescription sometimes. It's the poorly made progressive. All right. Um, so what's my take? Cheers. Good Friday, y'all.
Um, my recommendation is what I would tell my family and my, do for myself is that your eyes are too important to not give you the best quality of vision that you can have. You know, so if you can go get a tier four, a minimum of tier three, don't even look into tier one or two. You need to go tier three or higher of a progressive, then you need to get that. All right. Um, invest, invest your money into that. It, it's going to be worth it. Trust me. Um, I don't know. Back then, you know, when I was first practicing, I, we, my office used to offer all four or all, at that time it was all three tier levels, right? We, we can go tier one, two, or three. And we could, we give the, the, our patients the options. Well, we started figuring out that people would start not adapting to the progressives when they get the standard progressives because, you know, hey, Dr. Tran, you know, my screen, I can't see it very well. I have to lift my head a lot. I'm just, I get dizzy. I have problems. So we would return it and go back to a two pair setup, right? And then, you know, as, as I got more, you know, as I started realizing down the road and, and one of my managers, George, he was like, man, we're, we're just offering too many options. Why are we doing a 20 year old lens, right? So we just need to put everybody in the quality lens and you're, you're gonna remove a lot of the problems that, that have. And absolutely, we started going to tier three only or tier two, three, and then now tier three, four only. We have less people coming back complaining about the problems. If, if there is, it's just alignment issues, right? Progressives, you need to be aligned very nicely. So therefore, um, we, we start having less people complain. People started loving the progressive lenses. Now they come back and like, hey, I want one I had last year or two years ago, but what else do you have that's newer, right? So until you experience something better and your eyes feel better, you feel more productive and more efficient, th that's the way you need to go. Right, it's gonna cost a little bit more, but it's gonna be worth it. Right, it's you're gonna wear a pair of glasses at least a year, maybe two. So it's an investment. Right, your eyes are gonna feel tired, not get irritated, stuff like that. Um, don't get them online. I, I'm gonna be honest with that. I'm straightforward with that. Don't get your progressives online. If, if you're a patient that needs a progressive, you go online. You just go get go ahead and give me that money, because you're not gonna wear them. I don't know how many times we have patients walk into our office, telling us that our prescription was wrong. But what we figure it out after, you know, back and forth so many times with their online provider that the progressives are just a standard progressive or tier one or two and it doesn't work for them or their alignment is completely off. The, the reason why you go into an optical and not do it online is because you want centration of your pupils to the frame. Now, offices can give you the pupillary distance doesn't mean it's going to be centered on the frame. I hope you guys realize that. Okay, that's super important. A lot of people may ask, oh, can I get the pupillary distance? No, it's not required, but I don't want to give it to you because then you're going to blame me for your problems. There's X, Y, and Z. There's, you know, the X plane, the Y plane, and the Z plane. Therefore, they all need to line up if you want to see super clear through your lenses. And that's why doing your glasses in person with the type of tools that need to measure correctly is going to be best for you. And in a progressive, you got too many prescriptions, too many uh, little details that you can't skimp out on. So don't get your glasses online for your progressives, especially. All right. Um, th so that's my take, y'all. Um, that's it for today. Um, I hope I didn't keep you too long. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know how I'm doing, y'all. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, message me, text me, email me. Um, but until next time, thanks for tuning in. Take care and stay safe. Signing off.